Namaskar, Nandini. Thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing your life story. It's an absolute pleasure to get to know you and learn that you've been a classical Indian dancer and artist for the last 16 years and that you are now in Buenos Aires. And uh, I'm so eager to learn about your life story. Thank you so much. Namaskar, Sri Guru Maha. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, yes, and let's see what happened. So Anandini, uh, with this uh, interview, I really would love for people to understand like what made you embrace classical Indian dance as a mainstay in your life. And also I would love for people to understand all the ins and outs, ups and downs uh, of what it takes to uh, live this life. And so um, let's go to the very beginning, beginning, beginning with beginning. Um, I would love to know what was your life before India, before Indian dance? Uh, well, I feel it was not complete at all. Uh, I was like a seeker all my life, since my childhood. My mother used to say that, you know, that I always look like far away, and she, she asked me what happened, what is going on? You are not happy. No, no, I am happy. I'm just, I feel I don't belong to this place. So I was uh, finding and finding. And when you are looking for, uh, finally you get what you are looking for, you know, sooner or later. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, I always practice martial arts and classical ballet. I love discipline. And I love also spirituality during my childhood and also my teenager time. I was reading a lot of different type of philosophies and after trying to put that on practice and to see, uh, to try to get an experience of that, you know, learning process and to check if it was for me or not until I reached to yoga and after Indian classical dance, which is yoga also. Yeah, definitely. And so um, how did you go to India and how did you prepare, prepare yourself for that journey? When did you first reach India? Okay, so um, I think before arriving to India, I was already in India because here I, I lived for a couple of, of years, you know, because I was really serious in the practice of yoga. And uh, after a while, I met a student of Indian classical dance. She uh, showed me a, a video of Indian classical dance. I always say this because it's where everything started. Uh, it was a 10 minutes long video. Uh, and uh, at the second minute, I knew this was what I was looking for and everything changed, you know, because finally after searching and searching because Many times I felt I was becoming kind of crazy, you know, because I was trying to practice something. I was really uh, was passionate about that and commit. And, you know, after some time I was like, okay, no, this is not what I am looking for. And like this. And so suddenly I knew I was completely, absolutely sure this was, this was what I was looking for. So everything changed for me. And uh, next day of that amazing video, I still remember the name of that dancer. It was a Bharatanatyam dancer, Meda Hari. She's an amazing, talented dancer. And I have the chance also to meet her and to uh, hug her, you know. Wow. And uh, yes, because she's, you know, my, my inspiration. Even today, she's an amazing, amazing dancer. And uh, so next day, I went to the Indian embassy in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, and uh, I was looking for, uh, you know, some information about Indian classical dance, and uh, they uh, gave me this book, this book, India, Sus Danzas Clásicas, India, Her Classical Arts, Dances, and uh, this is a book made by my Argentinian Guruji, uh, Mirta Barbier. She's not anymore with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came back to my place, I was just getting ready, you know, to, how do you say that? To take a deep 
on on that you know yeah on, to dive in to dive in the subject yes thank you yes <laughs> and uh, so i just sat and i i made a tea and i read the whole book within all night long i didn't stop i was not able to stop to stop you know i was <laughs> not yes and the next morning i finished the book at eight in the morning i was waiting i i took a shower because the indian embassy opens at nine and i called them and i, I asked for miltaji's number and i called her and next she invited me for a tea next uh, i met one of the most important uh, person you know in, in my in life journey. Mm, yes. how beautiful yes so you began and, studying with her? Yes. And it was in 2005, you know. Uh, mm. So she was giving classes of Bharatanatyam because Bharatanatyam, if you compare with the other Indian classical dances, is uh, simpler, let's say. Indian classical dance is not simple. <laughs> uh, but she always, yes, but she always used to say that uh, she was not a teacher. She was a dancer because she was a classical ballet dancer and a choreographer, and, and maybe she had not the <laughs> patience, you know, to be a teacher. And, you know, it's really hard to teach. It's, it's really, really hard. So she was um, inspiring me all the time. You have to go to India. You have to learn properly because only op over there you can get, you know, what Indian classical dance is. So from the very beginning, I understood I to pursue in order to pursue my in my aim in life, I should go to India. So I started to plan a lot, you know. I plan every single detail. Maybe after when I reach to India, many many of those plans broke up <laughs> completely. <laughs> but at least, at least I tried. And uh, so I was kind of prepared. The most important thing I was, uh, uh, I, I loved India always. And I still love India. Mm. And, uh, and that's the most important point, you know, when you love something and uh, a place and uh, its people. So you are flexible with so many things maybe you don't like or you are not used to to do, you know, to, to manage well, maybe in your country, in your place. Uh, when you are abroad, you have to adjust a lot, especially in so India. So the improvisation of the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jagad, they yeah, say. Jagad, yeah, Jagad, yeah, yeah, Jagad. <laughs> so you have to be master, you know, <laughs> you're taking whatever happens. So, and it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. It it's magical. Yes, because magical. to reinvent yourself, you know, completely. So you have to, oh, this happen. okay, I will die. No, just <laughs> <laughs> relax. So, especially if you are into, into disciplines, um, what is that? Uh, I was trained as a classical dancer, not an, in a professional way, but I, I was quite, uh, you know, serious. And also in martial arts. So this means you follow a discipline. Yeah. So you have to be when you reach into India, everything. <laughs> everything is turned upside down. <laughs> yes, and it's amazing, but uh, it is difficult to keep balance, you know, yeah. you have to be so sure what you want, what you what love. What you're doing, yeah. Yes, because yeah. otherwise, you you know, your you can mind... get unmotivated, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and you run away, so many. <laughs> so tell me something, I assume that when you first went to India, you went to Chennai, that's my feeling. Yes. You went to yes. Chennai, maybe to Kalakshetra? Yes. yes. Uh, so yes, first of all, the first months I was traveling, traveling all around India, trying okay. to be different places like Vrindavan, because I practice Bhakti Yoga as well, and uh, Rishikesh, Ambaranasi, uh, different places. You know, I also went to Gujarat, and uh, and but actually I was trying to get ready to go to Chennai. You know, because yeah. I didn't know there is a big difference between North India and South India. India. Hundred yeah. percent, and uh, uh, so South India is really easy for us. You know, it's yeah. a really easy place where to stay. Everything like is like, it's easier. It's easier, mm -hmm. and uh, so yes. So I went to Kalakshetra, but to stay, you know, to study in Kalakshetra, you have to stay there for at least three years. And at that moment, I was not able to stay there, you know, for three years. 
So I started to learning under uh, the guidance of uh, Adia Lakshman sir, who was a teacher in Kalakshetra, who was the teacher of Sogmitaji, you know? Oh, right. Yes, uh, but in Kalakshetra, I was able to uh, to take classes of Midangam, you know. Okay. This they allowed me to do, but okay. uh, I was going almost every day. But uh, my classes were outside of Kalakshetra, but uh, in a Kalakshetra style. All right. So how long was your Bharatanatyam journey? Oh, around... How long did that last? Uh, mm -hmm. Like seven years or so, because mm -hmm. after uh, the third year, fourth year, I came to know uh, about Odyssey. You know, I, I used to watch a lot of videos because anyhow, because we didn't grow up with this uh, uh, type of culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in order to try, to try to get, uh, so I was watching a lot of videos, different Indian classical dances. So I came to know about Odyssey and I fell in love with Odyssey. And I wanted to try Odyssey. And I didn't know it was <laughs> like this difficult. I didn't know. I didn't expect that. I was thinking, okay, I already managed Bharatnatya and I can manage this. Wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Completely wrong. You know, like the starting, I remember after a couple of months, they started to teach me Mangala Charam. And you know how we move the torso, you know, in Chalanachari. You know, like, so what I was doing. <laughs> so one of the old gurus asked, you know, what is going on with this girl? <laughs> well, she's a Bharatnatyam dancer. Oh, Bharatnatyam. <laughs> <laughs> Lost case. <laughs> you know, because of course, you know, in Bharatnatyam, we, we express in such different really ways. Different, yeah. you know? <laughs> so we don't so have different. that. Yes. So I struggle a lot with the upper part of the body. body. You know, yeah. everything was fine. You know, the mind was fine, but my body didn't <laughs> you get up, it. Up. So would, you, so, so would you like come and go from Argentina back and forth uh, to study dance? Yes. So yeah. what I started to do was bring in my teacher over here, you know? Oh, great. So I was able to continue my learning process properly, you know, because uh, something you need to understand about Indian classical dance is you need to practice and practice and practice and, and keep going, keep going. Because you don't practice, Ganga sir, my first OBC teacher used to say, if you don't practice one day, you lose seven days of practice. <laughs> so and that is stick, you know, in my, in my mind very well. Mm -hmm. I used to see him brushing his teeth in the morning doing choka. <laughs> he was an amazing mad fellow, my God, that uh, like a genius mind. So, so you're talking about your uh, ODC teacher? All his teaching. Yes, my ODC teacher. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Ganga sir. He's not anymore here in, in this world. Mm. Uh, he passed away in 2010. And uh, so, but uh, my experience in uh, ODC was uh, completely different than uh, in Bharatnatyam. Because in Bharatnatyam, I used to stay in Chennai, in a city, in a beautiful city. It's a real cultural place. It's beautiful. Everyone is really nice and polite. And it's easy for us to stay there. Uh, but when I reached Odissi, uh, Orissa, and I went straight to the Gurukul, to Natya Mandap in Konark. And it was a completely different experience because only two people speak English, you know? So everyone was speaking in Oriya. I didn't understand anything in Oriya, you know, at that moment. And uh, so, but. Anyhow, you communicate if you like to, you know? Of course, hand gestures, eye expression. Anyhow, you know, <laughs> I always was like this, you know, <laughs> my face and my hands. So I think everyone uh, was getting what I was trying, you know, to ask or, or whatever, what I need. And uh, so for a while, you know, at that moment, I stayed there for, for many months. I realized I really wanted to do that, you know? I wanted to... Uh, to be even more serious because I was really already really really serious because I quit to everything in my life when I came to know one in classical dance I just dropped everything every absolutely everything so I was thinking mm -hmm. I will do only this I will focus but at that moment uh, with that Gurukul experience which was maybe 
uh, one of the most amazing uh, moments mm. of my life when I had that chance. It was amazing. That place. Uh, How long were you there? Like the first time? Like five months. I didn't move from there. Wow, beautiful. And I did. And staying with the small gotipuas, you know, with those babies, so sweet babies. And uh, every single day, you know, wearing like cotton saris, so simple saris barefoot you know one day i was uh, cycling to the market to get a, uh, to get some fruits and uh, the sunlight was uh, in my face and i saw konark sun temple there and i was trying to avoid the cows and i don't know i was in a completely different place you know mm. i was born in argentina in, in south america in buenos aires okay tango place <laughs> <laughs> so and you know what was strange it was i felt at home i i was not feeling okay what i'm doing here you know i felt so blessed you know to have mm. the chance yes and it was a really special moment and i didn't want to go from there and uh, when i left that place i cry and cry and cry and i came back and i woke up every single morning crying and my husband say okay ch chalo go back <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to keep you here like this. I was crying and crying, mostly for for my teachers, very old teachers, so sweet teachers. Mm. And, wow, you know they are uh, such a special souls. Those children, I am mad for Gotipua. I can I can feel that. And, uh, <laughs> so for a, yes, they they are amazing. Really, really amazing. And uh, uh, so for a couple of years, I tried to keep, you know, my Bharatanatya learning and also my Odyssey learning, you know, both training. And after some time, I realized I should make a choice, you know, because Bharatanatya is very simple for my mind and my body. I can manage very well, but Odyssey is, that's another thing. Very intricate, very intricate dance. It's completely different, you know. And uh, so I made, I made a decision. So I was thinking, okay, whatever, whenever I want to do Bharatanatyam, I can do. But now I have to focus, you know, properly, because in order to grow up and to reach the best of, of, of my potential, I, I have to do this. And uh, so I quit to quit. No, I never quit to, to Bharatanatyam, <laughs> but I stop. I stop learning also that that was in sync because my Adya Lakshman sir passed away and uh, he was so much inspiration for me that mm. fellow taught me what was the meaning of the word guru you know he was a huge huge guru Beautiful. so humble so knowledgeable you know so he he gave everything you know, to me he was amazing so he passed away and I was thinking you know, no, oh, if I am going to go back to China, I will feel strange. I went back many more, many, many more times, but it's not the same. Mm, of course. So I focus on this. Yes. So um, and it so was you, a right choice. So tell me something. Um, you you started with Gangadhar Pradhan at the Gurukul in Konark, right? Yes. And uh, when he passed away, what happened? When, when he passed away. One of his main disciples, Arun Pradam, was here in Argentina with me. He stayed almost for a year. I was not able to, to go to India at that moment because I had many dogs. I am a log dober. I had eight dogs and one of the dogs was really old and ill and she was using a wheelchair. So, and I had to take care a lot of her. Uh, so at that moment, uh, you know, I decided to bring Arun uh, here. And uh, what happened? I, I still feel Ganga Sel lives in Arun because Arun mm. was his uh, first disciple and also is his nephew. So the if, family. Someone, yeah. if someone knows how to train, you know, uh, in a really, really hard, you know, training <laughs> like uh, they do, you know, in Orissa, it's a really like hardcore training. It's Aru. <laughs> yes, it's hardcore. 
what I think is really beautiful is that you invited your teachers to come stay with you in Argentina and you hosted them for such a long period of time. Yes. I mean, that's really, I, I've never heard of that. It's not very common for students to have their teachers come and stay with them in their hometown. And, and that is just such a, an amazing opportunity you gave them and an amazing opportunity you gave yourself to train and not stop your practice. How was that journey having your teacher, you know, your guru, guru bai, basically guru bai at home with you in Argentina? How was that journey? Uh, first of all, I must say I am completely grateful for that chance, you know, because first of all, Learning is a privilege. I always was aware about that. Maybe some people are not aware. We are really privileged, you know, if we have home, we have food, we have the chance to learn whatever we want. So we are really privileged. So that's a privilege to have the chance to keep your teacher with you. Imagine, you know, but I work really hard for that because I don't never went out of India before and it was a really long process you know a tedious paperwork process you can't imagine for three months I didn't sleep because I was contacting you know the Indian embassy the Argentinian embassy there in, in New Delhi they didn't want to allow him to come um, um, it was a really long process it's very complex finally, it's a very you know, complex I, yeah. I, I, very complex yes especially for uh, some Indian citizen who never went out of India, they don't want uh, to allow them to go out. <laughs> you know, I don't know why exactly. So strange. But uh, yes. Uh, so my experience with him having him here, it was amazing because also you, you come to know so much more about the culture because you share every day, you know, you have to share, you know, the, uh, the lunch. Breakfast, and lunch and dinner. He becomes your family member, basically. So yeah, it becomes yeah. family. Yeah, so basically what I have done, it was my own Gurukul, you know, in Buenos Aires, <laughs> because I was serving him. That is just beautiful. I mean, I think that's, a, I mean, I, I do know about a few stories, but not such like long periods of time. You said you had him there for such a long time. That's really uh, admirable that you gave him that opportunity. And it, I mean, I see the, and I just think it's so important that you pointed out now it really touched my heart so deeply when you said that it's a privilege that it we is. have an opportunity to study this art with these masters, you know, and with their lineage holders, you know, it's such a privilege. And I think it's really important that people understand that it's a great privilege for us to have access to these teachers and this art. So uh, thank you for that. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, I'd love to understand uh, or learn, actually, uh, while you were in India, because I know you spent long periods of time there. I know you were living in Bhubaneswar for a long period of time. I'd love to understand how was the, your reception? Like, how did people uh, accept you in Bhubaneswar? How has the Indian community, the dance community in Bhubaneswar supported your uh, mission with ODC? And alongside with that, what are the struggles that you have undergone uh, being a foreigner, you know, in, living in Orissa and, you know, being a promoter of the art? Uh, well, first of all, I always was a very independent woman because I grew up with a really strong woman, my, my dear mother. And, and so that means a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I never seek for the approval of others. Uh, you know, if my close family and my close friends, uh, they love me, I love them. So they never, you know, will, uh, will do anything about it against, against, you know, what I love. So this, first of all, and uh, after, and uh, to live in Orissa is completely different of living in Delhi or in Chennai or in Mumbai, you know. India is a huge place, it's a subcontinent. And uh, depending, according which place do you choose, uh, your experience will be completely different, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So Bhubaneswar, Orissa is a really traditional place. It's like a big village. So you have to adjust, you know, to that. Uh, so, you know, maybe some, the issues I faced uh, were mostly about the, the language because they don't speak English and my English also is, is kind of limited, but I can't communicate. So, but they don't speak English. And so I have to try to start learning uh, Odia, which I understand, but I can read and, and, and write. And uh, so it was like uh, the next step to give myself more to this art, you know, because uh, they are not used to see a strong independent woman living alone, you know, away from family. Uh, but all the people are, are sweet people. They are strong because they are Kshatriyas, you know, they are warriors. Yeah. But they're really so hard. You need to find that sweetness, you know. Uh, see, if you understand what Odyssey is, that's the manifestation of their heart. So how beautiful and sweet Odyssey is. So this is all your people. <laughs> that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, but you need to find, you know, because sometimes they are hard. Also. Time. You have to, you have to, you really have to be there and mingle with them and make them understand that you are respectful to their culture, to their traditions, and that uh, earn their respect, basically. If you have a respectful posture, then you will earn their respect. That was my uh, experience being in Orissa. Uh, what were the challenges? I'd love to learn your challenges. Uh, challenges, okay. Um, what I find is a huge challenge. Challenge. Besides uh, the language. Besides the language, yes. So I am a um, animal lover. So, and that's a big issue because India is a land of contradictions, the duality. So you will find the highest state of mind of a human being and the lowest also. So you have to be ready, you know, to manage that in your mind because your mind will break out completely. Uh, so for me, trying to understand compassion uh, and to be flexible enough to understand there is a place where people are trying to survive and to take care of animals, stray animals, especially cows and, and dogs, is, is not, uh, how to say, uh, it's not so important, you know? It's, it's on the same true. way because they have to survive. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's difficult for someone who is uh, really sensitive. I'm really sensitive with animals, I'm very extremely, maybe too much, you know? <laughs> and uh, this is part also to be, uh, to work with art because you need your sensi sensibility. Otherwise, how you will feel, how you will express, you can't give what you don't have. So you can't put, you know, like a wall because I I met so many girls, you know, because it was really difficult, you know, to live in Bhubaneswar. So they, they became like zombies. And uh, of course you have to become stronger, but you have to keep your sensibility. Otherwise you can't, express through your dance you can't connect you know so to find that balance is really complicated i i, I feel that's the challenge um i would love to understand uh, learn um how is your desi journey in buenos aires these days uh, do you teach are there people interested in classical indian dance in argentina how is it back home well, um, first of all, I don't teach anymore since so long I don't teach anymore. When Aru was here with me, uh, we were teaching. I was teaching under his uh, supervision and with the aim, you know, to share, to spread this beautiful uh, art. And, but I find really complicated uh, people in the West want everything fast, you know? And uh, you can't uh, expect overnight success 
in every classical art, not only Indian classical art. You can't, it's not possible. So if that is not clear in your mind, so you're wasting your time because doing two months, three months, so one year, two years, is a waste of time from my point of view, you know, from my perspective. And uh, I find uh, it was really complicated, you know, to keep, you know, to keep the people for interested because also it's not my issue because I can share what I love with all my love, but it depends on you because it is your journey. You know, if you love, if you don't love, nobody can be forced to love something. Of yeah. course, yeah. So, so that is so complicated, you know? So if you don't love this, how you will manage, how you will keep practicing every day? Because it, uh, you know, it creates a lot of tension in your muscles, in your body, you will feel tired. Uh, the your feet will the skin of your feet will open you will bleed uh, this is the reality you know uh, and uh, if you don't love it it is difficult you will maintain you will keep you know and even if you love something so much you don't need someone to keep pulling you do 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 if you love something the vision will pull you you don't need your teacher telling you oh, you have to practice you have to you have to you have to do no it's not like this you know yes. uh, mm -hmm. so this is what I uh, I feel this is my experience mm -hmm. so I do classes online classes I do I don't teach anymore uh, I do lecture demonstrations and performances and I am spreading uh, a lot the books of Mirtaji and uh, you know her legacy uh, because I am the career of her legacy, which is amazing because she was the pioneer in South America. Mm -hmm. and she was a really amazing, an amazing lady and a great soul. And uh, she did a really quiet work. You know, this is the, sometimes what this generation and the new generation also uh, doesn't understand that you have to work in silence. You know, you can't do like two months, three months, one year, two years, and after that, okay, I am a teacher, I'm this. You have to work in silence, you know, because after some time, this will blossom. But the yes. process, you need time. Yes. You can force it. Time and commitment. Yes, it's a lifetime commitment. A lifetime. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, let me see. I would love for you to share. So you tell me that you're taking classes. That means you continue studying dance. Yes. Uh, you continue practicing, you're performing. Uh, how do you find um, with this whole pandemic, uh, the, the, what are the challenges that you're finding with the pandemic and now everything turning online? And uh, how has this journey been for you? Um, an amazing opportunity to keep doing that silence work. Since some years I am trying to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like an, another amazing opportunity to go deeper into that. Mm -hmm. This is my own experience, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also that uh, is the inspiration of my gurus uh, because I had amazing gurus and uh, there is a common, you know, if you allow yourself to see, you will see, you know, there is something in common in everyone, you know, who are reaching the best of their potential, of potential. Uh, they are reaching their own excellence. And uh, to keep working in silence is one of these, you know, just keep working, 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 you know, like every day is like un granito de arena, how do you say that in English? It's like the when, ant. Yes. Uh, like, how do you say that? Um, uh, each grime of sand. It's like a stepping, you know, stepping stones. Uh, yes. Each one takes you higher and higher and higher. Basically, what I'm feeling is it's a sadhana. This dance yes. is a complete sadhana in your life. And that's how you live it, as a sadhana. And Absolutely. A, and a yoga practice and an offering. Yes, that's how you live it. Mm -hmm. 
And on that note, what would you like to share to people who are interested in learning classical Indian dance and uh, have interest in going to India? What are what is your advice to people? Uh, the first point is you need to be flexible. <laughs> this is the first. <laughs> if you're not flexible, <laughs> Mother India will make you flexible <laughs> because That's she will break you. <laughs> But the it's please so true. <laughs> don't misunderstand me, okay? It's amazing. No, I know, I understand. That's true. <laughs> I always say, you know, I use this, um, <laughs> that is to be in India is like if someone uh, would it ain't uh, butter in your whole body and they push you in a, how do you say, tobogan? <laughs> how do you say in that? Like a, in a sand slide or like. <laughs> in a slider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to, <laughs> to catch. And, <laughs> and you cannot get out of it. <laughs> so suddenly you realize, okay, I have to enjoy anyhow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's an amazing journey. Really, really. It's uh, I, I don't change anything. Believe me, I had really uh, like hard experiences there. Uh, but I, I don't change any of those, any, any of those. So you have to uh, be, you have, you must be flexible. You have to keep your mind open. It will help if you have the chance, you know, to visit different countries, you know, a part of your one, because uh, the possibility to travel opens your mind, you know, because you know different cultures, different people, different way of, of living and so on. So this will help. So for whoever wants to visit India, and first of all, you know, uh, you need to know that you are, uh, you have a really big blessing because it's a really special place and you could make big advance and advancement in your uh, spiritual life. Growth, you know? growth. Like, you can have a lot of growth. A, a lot, you know, and uh, this and it's amazing. You have to plan properly before to go. Try to plan, you know, uh, check uh, what you like, with what you you like to do over there, because it's completely different if someone is just going to visit or they want to practice like Hatha Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga. It will be completely different for someone who wants to develop Indian classical uh, dance or music, you know, mm -hmm. they have to go to different places. Uh, so plan properly, you know, but a city uh, I must recommend is like the is India itself is Varanasi. You must go to Varanasi. Must. <laughs> yes, uh, that's that's India with everything. Yes, that's India. With the highest, with the lowest, uh, with the spirituality, with the uh, business, with everything. You know, it's so all the contrasts. The, like most, everything it's you see the whole cycle of life in Varanasi the 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 birth the death the the wealth the lowest the devotion the <laughs> it's the so whole Maya that is, there yes that is India that is for me that, that's India you know India that today really India today yeah Yes, India today. Yes, actually, yes, India today. Because sometimes when people are thinking about India, they think about the classical India, you know. And when they reach there, they go, what is this? <laughs> you know, what is going on? What happened? <laughs> Where yeah. are the sadhus? You know, Where are the yogis? <laughs> They're all you hidden come... away. They're all hidden yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> they are hiding. <laughs> they are hiding. They are hiding. They are. They're still. They are there. They are there. So you need to be uh, sincere enough. To, uh, to go there. If you are sincere with yourself, believe me, you will reach. Definitely, definitely. So first of all, you have to be flexible. You have to be sincere and truthful with yourself in case you want to, uh, to try into Indian classical dance, you have to be truthful to that art too. And you need to understand it will take a lot of time. time. At least, you know, a couple of years to, to see if it's for you or not for you and after that when you realize you love it and uh, 
it's made it's it is for you so you have to made a to make a strong commitment you know so this but this is <laughs> for it is a life you know whatever you are choosing to do in life you have to try to reach your highest potential at least this is my vision i don't know maybe i am too intense you know <laughs> Yes. No, I don't think you are. I think yeah. You're just an empowered woman who has a very high vision for herself. And that's really beautiful. And that Thank is you. probably a reflection of your mother coming through you and a reflection of your devotion, you know, to to God. And to all that, yeah. I, I you know, I my life is not perfect, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy. You know, we don't need to be perfect. We are we are not at all. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, we need to try to be happy and to make uh, you know people around us also happy. You know, yes. and I think that's important. Uh, but I feel really blessed because of the chance to do what I love and to have the chance to be in contact with such uh, amazing uh, souls, like my gurus and also my friends, and that's a blessing. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing your story with me today. Uh, it's been wonderful to get to know you a little bit better and uh, really feel in my heart uh, the sadhana is so strong in you. That's, I feel so, it's so beautiful to feel that. Thank and you. And so I want to just say that I acknowledge that in you and it's very inspiring and I hope that this interview can inspire anyone who is looking to pursue classical Indian dance or music uh, to pursue it with the intention that above anything else, it's a sadhana, it's, a, it's your truth with, with the divine uh, reflected through art. So I see that very clearly through you. If you open your heart, blessing will come to you, but you need to open, otherwise nothing will come. But blessings yeah. are for everyone. It's true. Well, thank you, Nandini. I wish you a beautiful uh, continuation of your journey. And uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day in Buenos Aires. <laughs> now it's summertime. It's beautiful. I don't recommend this place for winter time. <laughs> but it's well, as beautiful. you see, I'm so bundled up because I'm in Portugal and it's really cold here now. January is one of the coldest months in uh, Lisbon, Portugal in general. It's snowing everywhere. So um, I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, I mean, we have heaters in the house, but it's still, I'm used to being in, I've been in India for so long. I'm just used to always being hot and sweaty. So this is a, a new experience for me, but everything is blessed, no matter what. Yes, you are in that time when you can reflect more. You yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, yeah. so it's nice. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for your kind invitation, for your time. Mm. I wish everyone only the best and yeah. trust in yourself and everything. The magic will happen, believe me. It will. All right. Yeah, I believe in that. <laughs> Jai Jagannath Anandini, thank you. Thank you. Jagannath.